Gold Owls is back after Sunday's action in NFL Week 1, a crazy Week 1. Like always, I have my biggest winners and losers of the week so far, my biggest, most important takeaways that we should all have. Let's get into it. The biggest winner of Week 1, the New Orleans Saints. Maybe not too many people would have predicted that. A 47-10 victory over the Carolina Panthers. I know everyone's going to be like, oh, they played the Panthers. They played the Panthers. I, I do not care. I don't care. Who teams played this week? Week one's always weird. Patriots beat the Bengals. Who shows up? Who doesn't? The biggest winners will be the most complete teams. The Saints, again, 47-10 victory. They were pretty com- they played a complete full game all the way through. Very consistent. Guys that people didn't expect to play well. Derek Carr played well, but they also dominated the game from start to finish. So a massive winner. Was Again, I was really expecting a defensive game. I think everyone was. So first touchdown of the day, bombed the Shahid. So they got going right away. Wasn't expecting the Saints to be their first touchdown of the game. But Kubiak, some questions with his in the past when he was a play caller. And it's still to be determined, just week one. But uh, some questions with him as a play caller is and, and as far as being unpredictable. He was too predictable in the past. Didn't have too many opportunities. That stood out in this game. They were very unpredictable. You didn't know it was coming from start to finish. The Panthers had to worry about so many different things. Camaro's really good. How about the rookie Taliese Fuaga? We knew he was pretty pro ready. We knew he would fit Kubiak's offense. A lot of outside zone. He was the ultimate outside zone tackle in the draft from Oregon State. I thought he stood out. I know the Panthers don't have the best pass rushers. It was a good match, and we're learning that. It was a good match for the Saints because the offensive line's a little bit of a question. Wasn't in this game. That's awesome. But, yeah, that they match up pretty well because the Panthers do not have the best pass rushers. But the Saints had to come out, executed. They did more than that. I love the depth in the rotation on defense. You know, Lattimore goes down. We know they're deep at corner. Uh, but they have so many different options, and we know the defense is usually pretty solid. But how about the blitzing game? And specifically, Alante Taylor, who's a defensive back, three sacks. So that's going to make teams scratch their head and go, I guess we got to watch out for that. And Demario Davis can blitz. They have other options that can that can blitz. They have a rotation on the D-line. If you look at the D-line on paper, it's not the sexiest thing in the world, but they got ball players and they're pretty balanced and they got rotational guys. So, you know, don't want to base too much off week one. Never like to, but maybe you go, all right, the Saints might be a little sneakier, might be a little tougher to deal with. Maybe... You want to say maybe with week one for everyone, but then everyone expected. And the Panthers are supposed to be better, but the Saints go out there and take care of business. You know, And another thing, the negative, not much of a negative. Olave wasn't too um, active in this game. Negative for my fantasy team. But you can actually make a positive out of this for the Saints because... Did they kind of sh- did they show all their guns? Like th- they dominated, they kept rolling in this game while they were kind of, you know, they were probably trying to roll some clock and not show all their guns, you know, all their weapons, all all their moves for the future, and they still dominated this game. So that really stood out. I'm looking for teams that put full, I could say, positive things about their offense, their defense, the whole team, full games. That That's kind of what this video is about. The Saints really stood out. The Vikings are another one of those few teams that put a complete game together. They did put the Giants. Giants, they were all a little lower on the Giants than we already were. Rough game for them, but the Vikings kind of created that. They went 28-6. to Again, a pretty complete game. They start the game with a three and out. They, they make a stop on defense, and then they fumble. Reminds us of, of last year, starting games with fumbles, and you spot the Giants three points. But bouncing back from that was, was ridiculous. Sam Darnold was pretty efficient. I mean, he, went, he completed... Several passes in a row. Aaron Jones getting involved. Uh, the defense continues to shut down the Giants throughout the game. Brian Flores, big winner this week, calling calling that great defense. Andrew Van Ginkle was a star this week. Uh, but stopping the run, you know, cre- even the bad field position at times too. The Giants were kind of winning the field position game, and they're just stopping them. And the offense making plays when they need to. The offense kind of hit the brakes a little bit. Typically in the past. If you've watched the Vikings, when they do that, they allow comebacks, but they keep it 28-6. to six. They're, And I thought Darnold wasn't playing as well when they were kind of hitting the brakes a little bit more. Um, but I, overall, I thought he played a really good game, maybe better than expected. Went against a good defensive line. Uh, Aaron Jones, uh, he wasn't... He had a sneaky, like, really solid game in his first game for, for the Minnesota Vikings. See Jalen Naylor getting on the board. Addison did go down. But Jefferson, not insanely productive, but pretty pretty product, productive enough. They had the lead the whole time. But mainly impressed with the defense, how it's called, how they play as a team. But, you know, getting that lead, keeping it, and, and just a complete 
team this week. And there's not too, there's teams where I'm, we'll talk about it. I'm pretty impressed with, you know, their offense or not their offense. They were pretty bad enough at their defense, but Saints, Vikings, these teams uh, were, were very, they played full games. They played complete games. They played weaker competition, but week one, they tear, take they take care of business and really stand out. I'm going to put the Pittsburgh Steelers in the big winner column. You know, the, other, the difference, the other teams put a little more of a complete game together, played some offense. The Steelers, you know, offense was set up in good, in good field position. You know, Boswell's an MVP. They couldn't really punch the ball in the end zone, couldn't execute fully. They made some plays. Pickens made some plays, obviously had a big time game, but they're to my point, they are in the big winners column because, one, the defense was out of its mind. They flustered the Falcons. Uh, number two, the Falcons were, I mean, they were sloppy. They got to kind of kick into gear, but that's a tough game plan for the Steelers. Falcons, everything's new. New quarterback. They got a lot better. Like, what is the proper game plan for a game like that? And they executed it. I mean, that makes it that much more impressive. And then kind of going back to the offensive thing, Russell Wilson's supposed to be the starter. He goes down. And, you know, you think there's not a huge difference between Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, but still, throw your other quarterback in there, and they find ways to win the football game. So they were not supposed to win that football game in ATL. Underdogs, that defense played out of its mind. So oh, they're, they're deserving. Uh, you know, again, looking for teams to be called big winners that play more of a complete game, but everything was just so impressive, so unexpected for the Steelers when, again, their starting quarterback's not in there. So, I thought they were well deserving. TJ Watt was, I mean, I think he was really got to break it down a little more. But based on all the football that I watched, I mean, maybe the best player in football that we saw this week. And there were some really productive offensive players, though, as well. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, he shows the, the presence that he, I don't even know if he lit up the, I'm not a big stats guy. Yeah, I know he had a sack. Uh, you know, I don't know how many tackles he had. I, he probably didn't light up the stat sheet. There's probably guys with better stats, but the presence, the impact, nobody matched it this week. So the Steelers find themselves in the big winners column this week after a, a close victory, but uh, they get the job done as underdogs against the Atlanta Falcons and make Kirk, made Kirk Cousins life a living hell in that game. It was a rough one for him because of Pittsburgh and their defense. And a candidate for maybe the biggest winner up there with the Saints. The other teams we talked about, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, really impressed. Another team that people were going, they played the Commanders, but that definitely could have could have been a trap game for sure. We talked about it going into the week, uh, and they pull it off 37-20. to 20. I don't know. Anybody else watch the game? I know the Commanders missed some field goals, but it felt like... Besides that, it felt like the Bucks, even with a 37 to 20 victory, it felt like they dominated that game even more than the score showed. Which I think the beginning caused that, but uh, maybe the, you know, drop touchdown was a tough one for McMillan. But it felt like those first field goal drives could have been touchdown drives. So that's probably what did it. But just a dominant outing. Baker Mayfield was awesome. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, McMillan got on the board. Mike Evans being that 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 Mike Evans, you know, in the end zone, that physical. I knew he was gonna beat up the the weaker corners, the younger corners of the Commanders. But uh, in the running game too, running game was. I mean, Baker was awesome. I keep going back to that. Baker doing Baker things. He's getting saw it last year, getting back on track to being that that guy. And we saw it in a game like this. And I know the Commanders are young, not the best team, but Dan Quinn defense. He went out there and balled out, breaking tackles, just doing his thing. I mean, he was one of the best. I think Baker was one of the best players in football this week, uh, You know, hitting his receivers at the right time. They were without Canales. You wouldn't even know it from a game like this. But back to the running game, I, I love the one-two punch going into the year. And Rashad White actually struggled running the football a lot, was sensational catching the football. But Bucky Irving stepping up and running very well, especially down the stretch, kind of closed this game out. Defensively, they did their thing. I, I think Todd, Todd Bowles a big winner. In this one, because again, we talked about the commanders could have been, a, even though they're not the best team, tough game plan. Uh, Kingsbury offense, it's more like a college offense. It's all new. Jaden Daniels got to worry about him running around, and he's got an arm. And even the defense is is new. It's different, uh, you know, than it used to be. So it's a tough game plan. But and Daniels did run around a little bit, and, and he ran. I think he led the commanders in rushing. Uh, you know, so. They did let him run around a bit, but I'm actually going to applaud the Bucs and, and, and Todd Bowles for that because they're like, all right, if he wants to run, he can run. Where He's not going to beat us doing that. He's not going to beat us. We're going to focus on throwing him off with this NFL coverage, this NFL zone coverages and blitzing, getting pressure on him when it's least expected, making his adjustments at the line that much more difficult because he's kind of been, Daniel's kind of been getting praise in that. So like, 
I know they tried to stop the run, but they're they're we're gonna make him beat him beat us like that. There's no way he's beating us only doing that. Let's focus on the basics and how you win in the NFL, you know, versus college. So I thought that was a really good job of kind of game planning and executing on this defense. So Bucks, massive, massive winner. If this could have been a trap game in week one, and they execute Baker again. Baker, one of the best players in football this week. So uh, really, very much impressed with Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Week One. The Dallas Cowboys got to be one of the biggest winners as well. They're underdogs against the Brown. The, the Browns they go to Cleveland and win 33-17. Actually, felt like they won by more than that. They dominated this game from start to finish. More well, actually, right away they get stopped. Browns get a good return. They get a field goal right away. But after that, even so, they start a little slow. After that, uh, pure dominance. Mike Zimmer defense looking pretty good. I know the Browns without some of their. Uh, offensive offensive tackles there, but they take advantage. Everybody played well. I mean, Eric Kendricks with Mike Zimmer uh, looking like prime Eric Kendricks again as well, but everybody getting on, in on the action. Like the whole defense, the defensive line, everyone digs getting his hands on the ball. Offensively, yeah, you're not going to see lights out stats, but they made plays in the biggest moments that kind of keep drives alive and keep it going. Everybody made plays. Uh, running game was there too, even without running a, a, a ton, even though they're kind of splitting the backs there. But um, yeah, they dominated this game more than the score showed. I think something that I did talk about in the offseason with Mike Zimmer's defense, and Mike Zimmer's always been a really good defensive coach, so that's something to get excited about. You lose your star defensive coach and Dan Quinn. The knock on Dan Quinn is it starts to get predictable. So much man coverage. Zimmer is going to Zimmer's tougher to game plan for his defense. It is a lot more zone. There's so many different looks. You know, you got the sim pressures or zim pressures, if you want to call it. Um, again, he elevates players, linebackers, which the Cowboys and D tackles, which the Cowboys kind of been weak at in the past. And um, that's where the Browns get teams. That's where the Browns kind of outplay those positions, really. So uh, I thought Mike Zimmer, it's a good look for Mike Zimmer's defense, which is a little more complex than Dan Quinn's, which is. I think good for the long run, good for the game plan aspect, and good for uh, big games and games like the playoffs because the game plan aspect is is bigger in, in those types of games. So, and it showed out big time in this game. But the the star power of the Cowboys is is what you know Dak making you know didn't have the greatest game I guess, but made throws, made plays when you absolutely needed to. Ceedee Lamb, Ceedee Lamb had basically had all of his production on one drive, and that drive kind of felt like that's where like all right, the Cowboys. It's early, but they're probably going to win this game looking at that. And then the start, you know, Micah Parsons, all these guys showing out and just being a problem and completely changed the game. So Cowboys got a, got to be a massive winner here this week in week one uh, underdogs pulling it off against the Browns, highlighting some more winners, starting with, starting with an interesting one, mainly Nico Collins, a huge winner. I mean, he was a big part, not just productive and not just, you know, you kind of wonder, he kind of came out of nowhere last year and, they added Diggs and the emergence of Tank Dell. Is he going to be less productive? No. The answer is no. He's going to be more productive or just as productive, just still getting better. But the presence and winning the game, huge impact on winning the game, just making some – maybe maybe the best hands in football. Uh, you know, the one downfield, the one to kind of secure the game. Without that, they can't keep going. So the biggest winner here for the Texans is Nico Collins. But you do have to mention the Texans, but I have such a weird relationship in this video with the Texans because one part – it's like, God, they're so explosive on offense. Great quarterback. And Stroud had moments where he maybe got bailed out a little bit, but great quarterback. All these weapons. Dig scoring two touchdowns. Nico Collins doing his thing. Joe Mixon ran all over the place. They have more of a running game now, and they're they're executing on clutch third down, fourth downs, winning the game, scoring when they need to. And it makes me go like, okay, that's that sounds awesome. But for all the everything to be going right for them and all that happening and – you know, I, I know they had control of this game. The Colts kept coming back. It's like, our right, Texans got it. Colts kept coming back. It, it never, I never was really worried the Texans were going to lose that game. But for the Colts to be like that close and in that game still where everything is going right for the Texans makes me go like, ah, the Texans probably should win that in an ass beating, really. So that's kind of a negative for me and maybe why they're not a big winner. But big picture, this is more of a win for the Texans in the long term because they have these weapons. They can execute in, in clutch plays, clutch situations They because they, they, they are so explosive. They get better on the ground with Joe Mixon. They showed that. They're a really good team. The defense was a little underwhelming. They made plays when they needed to, but... 
And the defense will continue to get better under D'Amico Ryan. So you match that with this offense and what they're capable of. Big picture, it feels like at a way too early stage, but I said it before the year that they could be a Super Bowl team. They're an NFC or AFC title type team, maybe more. Um, so positive in the long run here. I just wish they, again, the way this game went for them, they should win big. So a little more perfect, execu- a little more execution going forward here. Uh, but definitely have to shout them out. Nico Collins and the Texans, uh, one of the best players I watched this week. Stats, presence, impact, uh, you know, across the board. So it's a team to get excited about. Patriots got to be on here as well. 16-10 to 10 win over the Bengals. They're the biggest underdogs this week, and the Bengals usually don't, do start slow. But, yeah, I mean, why, you know, I'm not gonna, why am I not going to go crazy for the Patriots right now? There's still really nothing that tells us, like, long-term for this year. You still think, yeah, okay, maybe it was week one things. Are, is their offense going to be able to do enough? I'd say Ramondre Stevenson did enough in this game. Mainly, you know, he's a winner, and the defense is a big winner. I mean, Keon White showed up, Kyle Duggar making clutch plays. Yeah, you know, the Bengals did shoot themselves in the foot, you know, fumbling at uh, you know the half-yard line, fumbling a punt, and just being the week one Bengals. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to over. It's one of those teams where I, you know, I'm just not going to overreact. But overall, impressive. The defense is going to could win them games alone. Could keep them in games. Stevenson again was huge. Hey, Brissett took care of the ball and they got the job job done. Big underdogs and they pull it off. So we got to shout the Patriots out. I mean, you got to say the Buffalo Bills are a, a mini winner at least because the offense is just so explosive, which really isn't a surprise. But Josh Allen doing his thing and the, there's a running game there, getting different guys involved. You know, no nobody really standing out in terms of a receiver. I'm surprised Dalton Kincaid wasn't more involved, but maybe they're saving that. I'd imagine he's more involved going forward uh, in a comeback, so that's great. That was, you know, Cardinals were doing some damage on offense in a comeback, but I am worried about the Bills' defense, which we were worried without Matt Milano going into the year. They can't dig themselves that hole against better teams. They're at home, so a little sloppy early on, but things weren't really going their way early on. They found a way out, but mini winner because the comeback and how explosive that offense is i'm gonna put the seattle seahawks on here as well and why i hesitate to do so is because they were super super sloppy in this game especially early on allowed a couple safeties you know holding in the end zone on one that run to you know t- took way too long and they got a safety gino started to back up gino started the game with an interception that fumbled punt return was a ba- stupid one bad one but most teams in week one do not win after that. They don't win. Um, so in the second half, they calm down, they relax, and like they're like, hey, we are the by far the better team in this game. And they kind of showed that. They look good in the second half on both sides. Of the ball looked good running the ball. Geno really picked it up. Defense was making stops, allow a garbage time touchdown. Um, but uh, we wish they held on to that. And so they, they covered instead of pushing. But yeah, very, very sloppy. They got to be more, you know, they, they got to cut that out. But to be able to bounce back, it's tough to do in week one and just show that, hey, they prove like they are the far better team in that game because everything went wrong and they still won pretty comfortably. The score might not show up, but they did. They won pretty comfortably. So got to shout out the Seattle Seahawks as well. I got to talk about the Bears defense and special teams. I mean, to come back from down 17 nothing to win that game. It's a weird one for the Bears, though, because you actually could argue, could we be a little lower on the Bears even after a win? Because the offense was supposed... I knew the offense wouldn't do much in this game. The Titans' defense is pretty good. But the expectations of the offense now kind of drop down. Could they lose games because there isn't enough offense? And the games really aren't going to go this way every single week. They're not going to get blocked punts, you know, returns, uh, that gift from Will Levis. But the defense... Uh, yeah, at the same time, the defense is kind of what we thought it would be. Special teams clutch us up. You just kind of got to shout them out because the clutch come back and made plays. But uh, the offense in, in our minds kind of drops down and makes you wonder a little bit. But they should get better as the year goes on in that category, you, you would think, with a rookie quarterback. I'm actually going to put Kyler Murray on this list. All right? they, they lost the game. They allowed a comeback. And I know the main talk about Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray is not seeing Marvin Harrison Jr. at, at the end. And that's tough. He's got to see him there. But... And that's a shame. That's the main talk. I thought he played a really good game. He looks good. Remember, he was injured going into last year, didn't play, came back, played against a good Bills team. I know the defense maybe isn't the best thing in the world. It's not the worst thing. But he's a problem. On the ground, through the air. He had a couple drops that hurt him. I know Marvin Harrison Jr. was open at the end, but he was non-existent. So he actually needs some more help. I thought I, I'm excited for Kyler going forward. I thought he did well enough to win this game and win it fairly easily. Um, so I, I was impressed. So there's a guy that lost his game that actually makes the, the winning column here very much impressed. And going back to Friday night's game in Brazil for the for the Eagles, I got to go Kellen Moore. I mean, that, that game was weird. Anything could happen. The Eagles end up figuring out an offense. 
Um, you know, don't I'm not really going to call the Eagles a big winner. A big winner here is the Kellen is Kellen Moore, their new offensive coordinator. I thought he called an incredible game, and maybe there's some doubt with him, and we'll still still to be determined, but. You know, Hertz wasn't playing great. He was actually playing bad. I don't know some of those throws he's but I do. I'm not an excuse guy for quarterbacks, but that field played a part for everybody. But quarterbacks were both quarterbacks were having a hard time planting and throwing, and the ball doesn't come out right because you always talk about footwork, footwork, footwork. It, it plays a big role. So we can give Hertz a little bit of a pass. But bad things were happening. They started a disastrous start. I thought Moore called a very, very good, complete game. The play called a Barkley on that wheel route for a touchdown. Perfect call. Predicted man coverage. Um, you know, the Packers were kind of heavy on man, but then they were randomly mixing in zone, and those plays were good for the Packers' defense. But Moore was adjusting. I thought he in that last drive. So shout out to the new OC there. Hopefully that is a long all-season thing because that was the, kind of a big issue last year, obviously. So Kellen Moore. A big winner for this week. And the biggest losers, obviously, you have to go with the Carolina Panthers. Maybe the biggest loser on the week. Bryce Young, everybody. Everybody on the Panthers. And weird things, random things happen in week one. Teams don't look prepared sometimes, and that could be it for anyone. But a game like this, it just makes you think, like, because they, they just got dominated for four quarters. Couldn't do anything. And it just it looks like they have so many problems, so many issues Maybe more than last year. Are they going to be a worse team than last year? Not saying that. I don't know if it's possible. But quarterback still seems to be the issue. And they the big thing is they made the defense worse in the act of making the offense better or supposed to be making it better around Bryce Young. And the defense, half of that looked true. The defense looked worse like it's supposed to be. We still thought maybe it could be a little decent and it can be going forward but not in this game defensive line of problems just don't have the pass rush we see them scrambling for corners Derek Brown goes down he's probably their best player so even more of a loser of the week because of that uh but the offense is you know it's supposed to be better but where is it you hurt the defense to do, to do this and it's just absolute disaster uh Bryce Young interception on the first throw that just can't happen the next interception was worse i mean just you can see him thinking shuffling around the pocket he had protection and not making a decision and when he may finally makes the decision it's an awful one awful throw it's just and we can't predict the future off week one but it doesn't look great for the carolina panthers it's in this game was supposed to be close you know supposed to be a defensive game at least and maybe a little more offense and everything was way way worse than expected in game one and then Derek brown going down so not a lot of hope for Carolina, but what's maybe hope is just weak, weird week one things, and they kind of got to get into it. I'm sure they'll get better offensively at some point, but man, that's a rough go against a rival in, in week one. Got to put the Giants on this list as well. I mean, just an awful outing. They look like they are one of the very worst teams in football, and it, you're playing a Sam, Darnold's, Sam Darnold Vikings team. They've been beat up. You know, no Hawkinson. It's They look like one of the worst teams in football. I mean, Daniel Jones really struggled. They got a gift early with the fumble. Could next you got a field goal. They're, they're starting with that's a big reason they're a loser too. They start with a gift. They have great field position. It feels like every time, and they cannot do anything. And defensively, they can't stop the Vikings. They let the Vikings park the break, you know, park the bus a little early and just get a big win. So the Giants, um, you know, you know, it's feared that they could be one of the worst teams in football. Hopefully, just kind of week one nonsense, but does not look great for them. It, offensively, it just know what neighbors is the weapon. And we said that was kind of a problem going into the year. That that's it. And defensively, you got D line. You got Dexter Lawrence. Like, um, you know, Brian Burns could be good going forward, but that's about it. You can throw on this team and just don't have much much going for them. So, as a rough look for the New York Giants, one of the biggest losers this week. A major loser is the Denver Broncos. I, I mean, this is a it's it's you get angry thinking about a team losing like this in Week One because everything went their way perfectly. Went their way. They start the game with an interception. I mean, Geno just threw it right to them. Couple safeties. I mean, those are a good job by the Broncos defense, but luck is definitely on their side. Couple say a holding in the end zone right on one. The the fumbled punt was a disaster. He had time to get it back up, and he drops it again. It's just just the Seahawks shooting themselves in, in, in the feet, and, and the Broncos, things going the Broncos' way, and, and they still easily lose this game. And, and it's it's especially in week one that's how that's how weird things happen that's how weird outcomes happen there's upsets all the time because 
things go weird things happen and things go the team's way and that happened for the Broncos and they could not win and they really weren't close and the score kind of shows it first half kind of shows it but the Seahawks won with ease in the second half and for things to be bouncing your way like this and you can't win and uh they can't get the ball downfield in the past game it's not the best look like it's what it's I say it all the time if you can't win that one which ones are you going to win? You know, and I'm, they're going to win games this year. They're going to, Bo Nick's a rookie quarterback. He'll get better, you know, and they'll be able to execute better. But man, if you can't execute fully off those gifts, when are you going to do it? Like it's, it's, it's a bad, bad look for the Denver Broncos in week one. It's just one of those games where it's like, you have to win that based on what's happening. Like you have to win it. And they couldn't do a major loser Right up there with the Panthers and, and the Giants. I mean, more of a loser than the Giants. Yeah, it's debatable because um, the Giants are one of the worst teams in football. But they all could be. You know, it's a kind of what everyone thought there. So not a good look for those teams. Got to put the Bengals in there as well. Uh, they just don't win week one games. I guess I don't want to overreact too much from it because they never win in week one. And they end up, if they're healthy, end up being a pretty good team. But, man, you get a gift at home playing the Patriots. You got to win this week one game. You got to execute. They don't. The only thing I really did worry about besides health going into the year was run defense, and it showed in this game they couldn't stop Ramondre Stevenson yards after contact and you know closing out the game. Really sloppy. Don't know what uh, Hudson was doing on that fumble with, with the ball there. That's tough. I mean, if they didn't fumble that, if they didn't fumble the punt, they, they maybe still could have won the game, but it was very sloppy. Worry about the run defense. I just don't like what's going on in Cincinnati. You know, T. Higgins pouting. He didn't get the contract, and he's I guess he's injured, and then Jamar Chase not being there. Um, he's just still on the rookie contract. I know he sees Jefferson just got a contract. Remember, Jefferson came out a year before him. Uh, you know, so you know he's it has an illness this week. Then when he finally comes back, it's just too many guys pouting and not having the right attitude. You have a chance to go be a really good team, win a Super Bowl. Um, so I'm not loving the situation for the Bengals. You know, are they gonna? They're going to figure it out. They lose in week one every week, but it's just not great atmosphere there, and it's just still a game they should definitely win, and they, they do not. So very disappointed uh, with Cincinnati. Raiders got to be on the list. I mean, you say uh, some week one things happen. They fumble the ball. They couldn't protect Minshew. If, if they would have taken care of the football you know, without you know, letting it loose, maybe they win this game because there was a section where they were outplaying the Chargers because the Chargers couldn't do anything. I know the score shows the Chargers won with ease, but – if those turnovers don't happen, maybe, and there's a, the Chargers won off that in a couple Dobbins runs, and that's in some sacks, and that's really it. But that makes the Raiders even more of a loser. Like you could, because you, again, you could say, well, yeah, if they clean up that, they probably win. But the Chargers didn't really do anything. I mean, they got sacks. Uh, you know, they fell on the football. The offense of the Chargers was pathetic. I mean, they couldn't do anything. The Her- Herbert wasn't doing much, and the Dobbins had a couple runs. That was that was really it. And the Chargers win with ease still. So it's a rival game. It's supposed to be 50-50 toss-up. Um, you know, so for the Raiders to just get beat like that for a team that had a pathetic offense, it just had a couple plays, a couple things going for them just to get beat pretty, pretty much, pretty, again, pretty easily, pretty clear cut there. It's kind of pathetic. You know, they're not as big of maybe of a loser as the Panthers, the Broncos, but uh, it's it's tough. That's a tough one. And a few more maybe non-teams I got to throw in there. I got to throw Will Levis uh, off. I mean, the worst decision of the day on the interception ended up being a pick six. Like, what are you doing? It's third down. You're winning the game. Uh, I, I just don't understand it. And the Titans special team's awful. The Titans probably outplayed the Bears, you know, besides the special teams. Uh, the defense was great for the Titans. It, you know, makes me think, yeah. The game kind of went how I thought it would go. I didn't account for the special teams, though, so... Yeah, it's a tough one. They choked that one away, but the defense could win them games going forward. Uh, and then speaking of the Bears, the Bears' offense is is a loser probably on the week. I mean, I, again, they probably got outplayed there. You know, based on their offense, they lose that game. You know, things kind of went their way. It's not going to happen every single week. You're not playing the Titans. You're not playing Will Levis and their special teams every week. So we're kind of lower on the Bears' offense now, but of course it could get better going forward because – uh, you know, Caleb Williams in, in company could could progress, I suppose. A couple more quarterbacks I got to throw in there. Deshaun Watson, a big one, just a brutal game. Yeah, they're missing their two starting tackles, but uh, an absolutely brutal game. Couldn't get anything going, uh, you know, while Baker's over there balling with the Bucks. you know, so it, tough game. 
tough one for him, you know, but that's it. It was brutal. It's just like, it's not like what happened to Sean Watson. I'm sure he can play well going forward. Maybe just a week one thing and the tackles were out, but what happened to Sean Watson? You know, where is he? And then Kirk Cousins, I know, and we've seen Kirk Cousins have games like that where it's like Kirk, people want to go, Kirk Cousins is awful, and then he kind of bounces back and figures it out. But, and, and you know, still learning that offense. He's coming off the Achilles injury, but it makes you wonder. Like, it was a really bad game. Um, finding ways to get hit by the by uh, pass rush still. Just really sloppy, throwing the ball up for grabs. You know, bad turnovers. And, you know, how is he without, the you know, Kevin O'Connell, Justin Jefferson? Uh, I'm sure they'll play, he's going to play much better, but... Very sloppy game. Expected a lot more. It was, uh, and then you makes you it makes you wonder is like is post Achilles injury Kirk Cousins just not the same? So, it, you know, it makes us you know want to fast forward next week. I need to see week next week right now. Um, top one against the Eagles. I, I need to see if this is for real because it's a little scary. I'm optimistic. Again, we've seen games like that happen, and he bounces back, and he's still learning the office office offense, but. Uh, not good, not good in that, in that one. And a coach on the losing column, and maybe his running back, Doug Peterson, and ETN. Not worried about the ETN, but that fumble right yeah, it's bad. That can't have that changed the game. Jaguars outplay the Miami Dolphins. Out they look good for most of this game, and uh, that fumble right there completely changed the game. It went from being an ass beating, the Jags are for sure going to win, to it just completely changed the game to choke it away. But Man, Doug Peterson's starting to call a good game in this one. They're, you know, when you outplay your team and your team looked good for the most part, and you find a way to lose. I mean, going for it on fourth down your own end. I don't know what the hell that was. I don't know where ETM was. I know there was nowhere for him to go. But so you know, a coach and a running back, kind of big losers. It's it's a game you got to win. The Dolphins did not play good. The Jaguars outplayed them for sure. They should win that game. Um, it's 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 brutal, you know. That goal line fumble is one play for anybody in the NFL could change the entire game completely. So, those are the losers that really stood out. Of course, there's other teams that impressed, look good, and look bad. Um, but those are the ones that really stood out to me. So, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Our week two content right around the corner. Power rankings, weekly picks, Tuesday night score predictions, Wednesday. I'm excited for. Just to get into it here, week two is going to be a lot of fun. Get out of the sloppiness of week one. There'll be a little bit still in week two. Uh, but make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications on, join us for all that content. Uh, you can check out all, our, all of our videos up on the channel. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.